All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Zoom call with Chris Stoll. Um, as always, I'll uh, call on people to ask questions and unmute you. Uh, just be patient as I unmute and everything, and we'll get started. We'll get started with we'll get started with Mark Brennan. You have me, Paul? Yep. Sorry about that. Hey, Chris, thank you for joining us today. Of course. Good morning. Hey, uh, can you tell us how you became a long snapper? It seems like a kind of an interesting skill to have. And it, was there a point when you realized that you could be pretty good at this, maybe at the college level? Um, so the story behind that is I didn't start football till my freshman year of high school. And I was a quarterback. And then my sophomore year, our senior snapper just all of a sudden had a little funk and he couldn't get it back there. And I was like, well, I throw it up. I throw the ball over here. Why not throw it between my legs? So I kind of started that. Um, I, first I was one handed, but then I switched to two hands probably about like week three or four. Um, then after I started for a year, uh, my dad and I decided to go to Vegas for a Rubio camp, which he's kind of one of the main, three kind of snapping gurus um, really kind of enjoyed it out there. I wasn't very good at the time, but I, I had fun competing with other snappers. And from then on, I actually got a coach near me uh, in Pickerton, Ohio, since I'm from Columbus. Um, and he really kind of molded me and made me what I am today. And from that point on, I was like, okay, this is something that I can do at the next level. Greg Pickle. Greg Pickle. Hey, Paul, this is Mark again. Do you have me? Yep. They, uh, I had to unmute myself, so people may have to do that on their own. Okay. Paul, that's my fault. I'm sorry. I don't know why <laughs> it wouldn't uh, unmute me. It just kept saying error, 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 error. All good. Uh, good to go. Hi, Chris. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for your time. Just wanted to get your thoughts on how things have been since you've been back, if you are back, and, uh, you know, what you're most looking forward to about, you know, not just the next couple of weeks, but also the start of camp possibly in August. Um, being back has been definitely different. Um, I really enjoyed kind of being with the guys who are in my specific group. Uh, I really enjoy being back with my roommates, you know, being in quarantine and Isolation with my family was awesome, but, you know, at some point you get kind of tired of it. Uh, no offense to my, my family or anything. I love them to death. But um, really kind of the next few weeks, I think camp's supposed to start in two weeks, maybe, maybe a week. Um, really just kind of try to get my body as close to in shape as I can. You know, of course, we've been training all quarantine, but, you know, training with D just different type of training. Um, and then for the season, I just I want to play. I really hope we can play and, you know, the Big Ten came out and said we're going to do just a big conference only schedule and I super support that. Um, you know, it sucks that we can't play non-conference, but still, we love playing Big Ten football and I can't wait. I really hope it happens. Tyler Donahue. Hi, Chris. Uh, thanks for your time today. I hope you're doing well. Um, wanted to jump into this week and, and what it kind of means for the preseason preparation for college football. We, we know that it hit a new phase um, in becoming more formal for workouts. Is that something that you can notice uh, versus the voluntary stuff that's been going on? I know it's all still technically voluntary, but this week represented a, a step forward on the NCAA's plan. Is that something you have noticed? Um, no, our, our guys are really good at you know, if it's voluntary or if it's mandatory, our guys are there. Our guys are working. We love to be around each other and push each other during workouts. So I don't, I don't see any change. Peter Terpstra. Hey, Chris. Um, 
how worried are you about there being a football season? It seems like uh, information changes daily. Um, I feel like we're kind of on a roller coaster, you know, a number of weeks ago might've been a bit more positive. How much do you think about those things? And is it hard to kind of push them aside? I think I'd be lying to you if I said, I didn't think about those things, you know, they're all over social media, getting ESPN updates all the time. Oh, big Ten's only playing big 10 schedule pack pack 12 might do something. Who knows? I really believe that, you know, if we just keep putting our work in, that's the only thing we can control right now. You know, the other stuff, it's out of our control. The only thing we can do is keep working hard, keep working on our crafts, and go from there. New bias, Wilborn. Hey, man, thank you for doing this, Chris. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, from there, just for you, what, how would you describe these last two weeks being back on campus from getting that first test waiting on the results what was that whole thing like for you man um it was okay uh actually my first test so i deal with allergies um my nose was just completely stuffy and then they had to put that thing up there it was it was kind of rough but you know just when we had to wait for our results it was okay i was just in my apartment with my roommates just enjoying their company for the first time in a long time and yeah i mean every test that we get you know every two weeks or so it's going to stink, but I'd rather do that than not play. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Audrey Snyder. Chris, um, I believe um, Jordan Stout's family was telling me that you spent some time with him during the shutdown. You guys got the train together in Virginia. Um, what was that like for you? And what's the relationship been like between you and Jordan? Uh, Jordan's my best friend. Uh, him and I are really close. Um, I think it was like three or four weeks into quarantine right after spring break where Jordan was like, Hey, come down for a week or so and get some work in, you know, he's, he's really focusing on punting and obviously he's, he's punting, kicking, holding kickoff. Like he's, he's doing it all, but he really want to focus on punting and he needed a snapper. So um, his family welcomed me down and I actually stayed for three weeks instead of one week. Uh, just love the town. He's from a little small town. Got to, see some of his friends, um, really kind of get to know where he's from. And then hopefully one day he can come to Ohio and see where I'm from. Mark Wogenrich. Chris, excuse me, following up on that, how did you console him about the loss of the Virginia Tech game? <laughs> he's still pretty heartbroken about it, but he, because uh, that was – Obviously, we're always one game mentality, one game at a time. But that 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 game was definitely marked in his calendar. Um, he's sad about it. He knows uh, we get to play him next year, I believe, at our place. If I'm wrong, I might be wrong. But he's uh, still looking forward to hopefully beating up on some Big Ten teams and doing well, kicking the ball out of the end zone. He's he's doing okay. Uh, we'll go back to Mark Brennan. Chris, how valuable is it to have a guy like Jordan uh, as a specialist who can do all of those different things that, that you mentioned? Super valuable. Uh, not only because, well, first of all, he's here as, as a specialist. So he's, he's really good. So he can not only start for us in multiple positions, but he can also teach the young guys uh, different things that might help them one way or the other. Um, him and Jake go back and forth pushing each other to to be the best kicker possible, and that really helps our team. Greg Pickle. Chris, you mentioned being back and working out. Obviously, uh, you know, Coach Franklin said recently on a podcast that guys are working out with um, your roommates, not their position group. So how has that changed for you, and who have you been able to work out with, and what has that kind of been like to uh, maybe be with some different guys compared to who you would have been working out with in, say, January or February? Yeah, it's, it's definitely different. Um, you know, normally I work with a specialist. Um, I've been working with uh, a wide receiver and a D end. Um, it's really just different because, you know, the strength of those guys and how hard they work is very evident every day working with them. Um, and then not only in the running, um, you know, normally we run with probably about 50, 60 guys, and now we're only running with 18. So you really get to see the leadership of everybody, uh, the camaraderie, how everybody pushes everybody. Um, it's really neat to see. And it's really neat to be a part of. Tyler Donahue. 
Chris, hypothetically, if, if Penn State were to add a left-footed kicker um, and you were preparing for games and competitions with a right-footed kicker and a left-footed kicker, how would that change the day-to-day -day practice process? How does that change the actual protocol procedure for executing such an attempt? So it doesn't really change much for me or for the kickers themselves. It'll just be on the holder. Um, either if we have to have two different holders, one is better holding for lefties or one is better for holding for righties or Jordan can do both. Um, that's kind of how it would go. I'm sure uh, during practice, each would get, you know, equal reps. And because especially with lefties and righties, I know left hash might be more difficult for a righty but that's easy for a lefty and then vice versa. So the more work that they get, not only with the holders and the snappers, but just on each hash, different distances, that'll work out well. Peter Terpstra. Hey, Chris, um, if we're able to get this football season going, what kind of escape do you think that can kind of be for people? If, if they're not allowed to go to the games, they are allowed to go to the games, whatever. How important do you think sports uh, might be? So important. Uh, I think, uh, I forget what it was, but I think a couple of weeks ago, my roommates and I were stuck watching competitive cornhole on TV. And we're just going nuts because we just want that competitive atmosphere on the TV. We want sports so bad. And I'm sure we're not the only ones in the country. Nubias Wilborn. Um, just to make sure I heard you right. So you mentioned, was that an accident on the Virginia Tech? being on the schedule next year i don't as far i think the last time i checked we were doing a home and home but i could be wrong okay okay to make sure that was kind of confusing and then from there you mentioned like the watching the, the bags the head of the bags and um what ha other things have you been watching what have you been doing particularly being quarantined with your time not, not yeah. Having, yeah i mean we of course we play our own bags in the backyard and i have some boys from home but Really, we kind of watch uh, replays of stuff, whatever is really on TV, or I know we watch on Netflix and Hulu. Um, I've actually been golfing. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an avid golfer. I like to go out and you know play by myself so I don't have to be around anybody and just kind of hit the links. So that's about it. <laughs> Audrey Snyder. Chris, obviously growing up uh, where you did in Ohio, got to ask, did you grow up on the Buckeyes? And what was that kind of like if you were an Ohio State fan as a kid? Uh, yeah, I was definitely an Ohio State fan. Uh, being 15 minutes from Columbus, you have to be. Um, if you're not, something's wrong with you. Um, first um, 17 and a half years of my life, 18 years of my life, I was all for the Scarlet and Gray. But, you know, as soon as – I got to Penn State and really engaged in the culture that Coach Franklin has established. Um, never going back, never looking back. My family's all on board, still working on the extended family, but um, really just love it here. And, you know, of course, I respect Ohio State and all that they do, you know, growing up a fan, watching Troy Smith and all them for all those years. Um, but the more I learn about Penn State and their history, I just – Love it more. And uh, just to clarify what Chris said earlier, Virginia Tech's return on the schedule is in 2025. Oh, that's <laughs> thanks. And uh, we'll move on to Mark Wogenrich. Chris, what is it like to work out day in, day out, knowing that an announcement could come where they say you're not going to play football? Like I kind of said before, um, you know, as much as I try not to look at it, I can look at those type of stuff of, you know, tomorrow technically they can cancel our season or, you know, week three they can cancel our season. I think that's all stuff that I can't control. And the thing that I can't control is working out right now and doing the best that I can to prepare myself for a potential season. We'll go back to Mark Bryan. Chris, where, where are you with respect to potentially getting a scholarship? Has there been any discussion about that? And how big would that be for you if that were able to happen? Uh, I'll leave that up to Coach Franklin and his staff. Um, obviously, that would be amazing and amazing to help out my family. But, you know, I know that Coach Franklin 
has a lot on his plate and he's going to do what he needs to do. I also trust him and I'll play for him whenever. And um, Really just kind of enjoying what I have right now. You know, last year was my first year starting. Really loved it. Got to see a bunch of different places. Um, it was just kind of a whole new field and, you know, sitting on the bench. But, you know, in time it'll happen. Um, and I'm just going to be patient. Greg Pickle. Chris, thanks again for your time today. I think as uh, the return to campus got closer, we could all kind of assume that things like masks and social distancing, temperature checks, all of that would be a part of the new normal workout routine at Penn State, at gyms, whatever. But is there maybe one thing that's been in place that's either surprised you or been something you really started to enjoy, even though it's new? Um, I wouldn't say I enjoy any of it. It's definitely weird, you know. Lifting in a mask is definitely difficult. Um, just got to get used to the breathing and, you know, running outside, um, running in these small groups always happen to be, you know, social distancing, um, you know, not one right after the other during the workout. You got to wait a little bit, which sometimes is good for more rest, but sometimes, you know, we're still pushing it. Um, so I wouldn't say anything is weird or bothersome um, or that I really like any of it, but, you know, it is what it is and I just got to make the best of it. Tyler Donahue. An interesting dynamic in, in your specialist room seems to be the fact that in a single game, you could have Jordan holding for Jake on a field goal within 50 yards. And then if there's a long distance one, maybe Jake holding for Jordan. I think I said that all right. Um, at, at the end of the day, uh, you know, how unique is that possibility? And, and, and you know, we had kind of gotten some intel on Jordan uh, that he felt like Jake was improving in, in that capacity. Do you see Pinnegar being able to hold for Jordan uh, consistent, consistently and realistically on those long-distance field goals? I do. Uh, I know Jake's been working really hard with me, but with, you know, getting snaps in almost every other day. And I think, you know, even if someone else on our specialist or even a quarterback or wide receiver who wants to hold for Jordan or even hold for Jake if – you know, Jordan's leg is dead from kicking all game. Um, I think we'll have enough practice and have enough reps during camp to get anyone prepared, Jake or Jordan or anybody else. Peter Terpstrup. I feel like snappers are overlooked. Um, how difficult is it to be, uh, you know, consistent enough to do it at a high level to play Division One football? It's very – how do I say this? It's very difficult, but, you know, I know I put in the time. I know I put in the work throughout the past four or five years um, of just starting snapping where I am confident enough to know that, hey, all I got to do is hit the certain spot on his hip and I'm good. And then I just got to go down the field and make a tackle. Um, you know, I'm confident in my work and my ability to do everything consistently every day. Um, and of course, everyone has off days and everyone, you know, misses a snap a little left, a little right. Um, but, you know, I learned to have a uh, short memory and kind of just move on to the next snap. New bias, Wilborn. Uh, earlier you mentioned Coach Franklin. What has he meant to just you as a player, but also as a man, particularly over this time during the pandemic and the racial uprisings and everything else? I think Coach Franklin has handled, you know, the pandemic, all the racial um, issues that have came up in our country. I think he's handled it perfectly. Um, I really respect Coach Franklin. Um, really one of the main reasons I committed here, um, how personable he is, how respectful he is, how he treated my parents. Um, and I know he does that to every other player. Um, you know, with this pandemic, I think he's handled it very well, um, always keeping us in the loop making sure if we have any questions, we can always contact him. And then also, you know, giving us some perspective on his background and Fumi's background. And just especially me, you know, as, as a white male, it's very interesting to see. And I obviously want to learn more about everything that's going on and any way that I can help. And he's been very helpful with that. Audrey Snyder. Chris, um, you mentioned the workout groups of like 18 or so. Uh, who are maybe some of the guys who stood out to you in terms of leadership in your particular group? Um, 
Isaac Lutz, um, Nick Tarburton. Zach Koontz has really taken a leadership role. Um, Jake Pinneger has definitely taken more of a leadership role. Um, and probably those are the main three or four guys that really have kind of stepped up, um, are very positive in their leadership. It's nothing like derogatory or demeaning. They're always uplifting you, making sure you get the next rep, making sure you're pushing each other to be the best that we can be. And it's, it's a very, very positive environment. And I'm very happy to be a part of that lift group for me. And we'll finish with Mark Wogenrich. Chris, you discussed Ohio State earlier, and I remember last fall before playing out there, you talked about what happened to all your Ohio State stuff growing up. You had a lot of gear. What would you do with it? Uh, we sold a bunch in a garage sale, um, gave a bunch away to family, friends. Um, yeah, there's there might be a baby picture or two of me and some Ohio State gear, but those are hidden. So all of it's gone, and – you know, my house is now flooded with Penn State gear, blue and white. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining.